Hi, I'm Drew Chavon, your Energy Specialist with the University of Maryland Extension. This video is part of our Solar Clips video series covering the basics of solar photovoltaics or solar PV. This video in particular explores the use of multimeters to check for continuity as well as to measure voltage and current of an electrical component or system. The use of a multimeter can help ensure the safety of your system as well as to troubleshoot any issues that you may encounter in working with your electrical system. Before we get started working with these multimeters, it'd be a good practice to avoid touching the metal portion of the probes when you're measuring voltage. In terms of safety, it might not matter what the lower voltage is that we're working with in today's video, typically under about 12 volts, but higher voltage around 60 volts or more can be a little more dangerous, while 120 volts will pose an even greater risk of shock. So knowing the level of the voltages that you're working with will help you in taking appropriate safety precautions while turning off the power or covering up your solar modules or, or disconnecting the solar module uh, is important before you begin any electrical work. There are a lot of different types of multimeters on the market today, ranging from the analog to the digital and clamp-on styles, but for the most part, each of these multimeters can be used to perform similar functions. Analog multimeters like this one on the left must first be calibrated to zero using the adjustable screw before taking any readings. You may be more familiar with the digital multimeters like these two on the right. In any case, each multimeter has a red and a black lead, each having a probe on its end. The black lead is inserted into the common, typically denoted COM, while the red lead plugs into the positive of the multimeter. These connections are fairly similar on most multimeters, although we'll address other configurations for these different connections momentarily in terms of other voltage or current measurements. So before taking any measurements, you'll need to ensure that your multimeter is designed to measure DC voltage or current. This is because solar modules and batteries operate with DC, or what's known as direct current, while alternating current, or AC, is used for most electrical appliances and the wall outlets in your home. A 15 volt DC multimeter will be sufficient to measure your common 12 volt solar and battery systems. When working with a larger 48 or 60 volt system, you'll need a larger multimeter capable of measuring those higher voltages. Perhaps a 70 volt multimeter would suffice. You'll also need to ensure that the battery in your multimeter is fully charged, particularly if the device has been unused for a long period of time. A low battery will impair the accuracy of your multimeter, so make sure the battery is fresh. We'll start by checking the continuity of a circuit, which indicates if there's a complete path for the current to flow. An open circuit will not have any current flow. It's only a closed, complete circuit, that's one that's switched on, that has continuity. To complete this measurement, the ohm setting must first be selected on the multimeter. In this case, we've set the multimeter to R times 1, meaning resistance times 1. Now bring the positive and negative probes in contact with each other to verify the ability of your device to measure continuity. With the analog multimeter, the needle jumps to zero ohms on the far right. The needle can be adjusted by slowly turning the ohm dial until a value of zero is obtained. With digital multimeters, you should see a value close to zero when you have selected the continuity setting, which is typically indicated by the propagating wave symbol and have connected the positive and negative leads in the same manner. Your multimeter may also emit a beeping sound similar to these models, which indicates the continuity of the connection. Let's now check the continuity of a standard light switch. Place the probes in either terminal of the light switch. With the analog multimeter, the needle remains at zero until the switch is flipped to the on position, meaning the circuit is now closed. In this case, the continuity of the closed circuit is verified by a needle reading. Repeating this process with a digital multimeter will yield similar results. There is no continuity with the light switch turned off. When the circuit is closed by flipping the light switch to the on position, we hear a sound emitted from the multimeter indicating the continuity of the circuit. Knowing how to evaluate continuity with a multimeter is useful for many electrical applications, including wire and cable assessment. For another example, let's check the continuity by connecting the positive and negative probes from the multimeter to either end of an electrical wire. If we connect the positive and negative probes to the same conductor, we should have continuity. Continuity. 
let's now consider how to measure the voltage of an electrical system. To measure the voltage of a battery or a solar module, a DC voltage setting must first be selected on the multimeter. Let's look at some examples. To check the DC voltage of a common AA alkaline battery, our analog multimeter will be adjusted to three direct current volts, or DCV, which will allow us to check this one and a half volt battery. You will always select a higher setting than the actual voltage being measured. Take the DC voltage reading, connect the negative probe from the multimeter to the negative battery terminal, and the positive probe from the multimeter to the positive battery terminal. You need to read the DC voltage from the scale that corresponds to whatever setting you've selected on the multimeter. In this case, we have selected the 3 volt setting on the analog multimeter, so we need to follow the corresponding 3 volt scale to obtain a reading of 1.5 volts for this AA alkaline battery. Now, to take a voltage measurement with this digital multimeter, uh, you first select the dial position with the appropriate V or voltage symbol. Uh, while each multimeter is going to look a little bit different, a curved line typically represents AC alternating current voltage, which would be measured in common appliances or within a household wall outlet. But uh, DC voltage, on the other hand, is typically represented by a straight dashed and solid line. On these particular models, the AC and DC voltage settings can be toggled back and forth using the select or SEL function uh, and the mode M function, or you may have an equivalent option on your own multimeter. Now connecting the leads to the battery in a similar manner, we uh, obtain a DC voltage of about 1.6 volts. The only difference with reverse polarity when the probes are switched is that you get a negative voltage reading. Reverse polarity won't hurt the multimeter, but it provides an indication of the current flow. So the same method can be used to measure the DC voltage of uh, many systems, including those with larger batteries as well as batteries in series. This also works for alternating or AC uh, current that you would measure in common household outlets. In that case, you just need to select the AC alternating current setting on your multimeter. Similarly, to measure the voltage of a solar module, we're going to connect the negative lead from the multimeter to the negative cable from the back of the solar module. Then we're going to connect the positive lead of the multimeter to the positive cable from the solar module. The male connector coming from the back of the module is typically positive, but you can determine polarity based on the positive or negative reading on your multimeter display. In this case, we're seeing a positive voltage reading, indicating we have the correct polarity, but if we reverse the connections on the multimeter, then we'd get a negative voltage reading, meaning that it would be reverse polarity. In any case, the measured voltage that we get with our multimeter can, can be compared with the open circuit voltage, or VOC, that's specified on the back of the module itself. In this case, our measured voltage of uh, a little over 19 volts is rather close to the open circuit voltage, 21.8, which is at ideal conditions. And again, that number is specified on the back of the solar module itself. Now, in measuring the current or amps of a DC electrical system, once again, ensure that your multimeter is capable of measuring DC amperage. Not all devices have this feature. You also have to ensure that you don't exceed the maximum current of your multimeter. This particular multimeter cannot exceed 10 amps or six continuous amps for 30 seconds, while the multimeter on the right cannot exceed 400 amps. Now to measure current in a simple circuit, we'll start by selecting the DC current setting and with this particular multimeter, we'll see an indication of the 10 amp level. The positive lead will need to be inserted into the corresponding 10 amp jack, and the negative lead into the common, or COM. In this case, we can't connect the multimeter probes directly to the battery as we did earlier, as this would likely blow the fuse or damage the multimeter. So in this example, we'll cause a break in the circuit to allow the current to flow through the meter, in this example, the current will flow from the battery through the multimeter and into the rest of the electrical circuit. By connecting the positive lead of the multimeter to the positive lead of the battery, and now connecting a negative lead from the multimeter to the rest of the circuit, we get a current reading of 0.25 amps, and the light bulb turns on since the circuit is closed. We can also measure the current of a solar module by connecting the positive and negative leads from the multimeter directly to the positive and negative leads from the back of the solar module. You may want to turn the module away from the sun or cover it with a dark cloth or cardboard 
If the current readings are at zero after connecting the multimeter, then the system should be de-energized. Now, uncovering the solar module, we get a reading of just over two amps, which is slightly less than the short circuit current, or ISC, that's specified on the back of the module itself. A clamp-on meter can also be used to measure the current of the solar module by carefully connecting the positive lead of the solar module to the negative lead of the solar module to make a complete circuit, again, while the panel is turned over and are uncovered. Now turn the module back over and enclose the conductor in the jaws of the meter to determine what the expected short circuit current value should be of the circuit. Once again, we see a value just over two amps, which is close to the short circuit current ISC that's specified on the back of the module. Well, I'm Drew Chavon with the University of Maryland Extension, and I hope this video has provided you with some understanding of continuity, voltage, and current measurements using multimeters. You can subscribe to this channel to stay connected on upcoming episodes of our Solar Clips video series, but in the meantime, please visit our website for more information on solar photovoltaics and other energy-related topics.